Shall I talk about the bed, please? The first thing that happened was um, I brought together a dancer who was 50 years old, a woman, and uh, a young, young man who was about 20 years old to see. I brought them together in my own bedroom and made a duet on uh, the bed. And there was a, a chemistry and uh, a tension between them that sort of, it was very, very fast to choreograph and we made it a, a duet very quickly. But I decided it wasn't for theatre. I didn't want to take it into theatre. So I offered it in the newspaper for people's bedrooms. And uh, lots of people phoned up and said, yes, we want this dance work in our bedroom. Uh, and we chose five bedrooms. Um, one man lived very much on his own um, and hadn't cleaned his bedroom for many years. And it was something really unusual to have in his, in his house. Um, he was lovely. And then um, there was uh, a mother and daughter who invited it into their home and then some other women, different ages, that invited it into their home. And we did uh, five performances going through the different bedrooms. And each uh, performance, they ha was, had a different setting. Sometimes they invited people, sometimes we had a meal afterwards. Um, it, it was up to the host of the house how they wanted to, to contextualise it. Then, on the last bedroom, uh, the lady said she wanted to sleep with the work. She'd seen it and she said it was too fast and she wanted to um, spend the night with the work. So that started me thinking, um, it should be a durational work, it should be all night, um, and it should go back into theatre, and back into public domain. Um, and so from the, from the short work, about 40 minutes to an hour, we had the history of all the bedrooms, so there was like five hours worth of material. And then there were some other imagery and ideas I wanted to bring into it, and it became a ten-hour piece. The double bed, which originally was uh, my bed, <laughs> from the house. We had to load that in the van and, and take it away. Leave my husband on the floor. <laughs> anyway, we, we took the bed and uh, put it in the theatre and the audience came with sleeping bags and pillows and um, whatever they felt would make them comfortable for the night and um, would make territory around the bed and then spend the whole night with the dance work. During the course of the night, the work changes quite a lot. Um, and the relationship with the audience changes. So uh, it, it begins with observation, but gradually uh, the sort of uh, structures and hierarchy through the night between dancer and, and audience shifts, and the audience realise they're just as vital and have more freedom than they expect during the night. And then in the morning, we all have breakfast together and talk about the experience. And the audience also keep for me um, diaries during the night. They write intrusive thought, just thoughts that come, imagery, thoughts that are provoked. Um, they leave those diaries with me, and then I put those, the ideas and some of the imagery perhaps into the next, next work that happens. So it's very intimate and it's very cyclical. It keeps, the expression goes to audience and back audience, and you know, it goes round and round and grows. As I said, I'm really interested in uh, offering the audience a different experience and breaking down the boundary between spectator and um, professional. I'm very interested in working with cross-generations, working with dancers of all different ages and audience members of all different ages. Um, I think that's really important. The male dancer who's dancing in the bed, I started working with him when he was 13 years old. And he danced, um, my first duet with him was with an eight-year-old girl, and we made a duet together. And, and the subject matter uh, looked at sort of uh, awareness of sexuality and how it grows. Yeah, I build long-term relationships with dancers. Uh, I don't audition. Uh, they're, they're people I've met and worked with, and um, very close friendships, uh, very trusting relationships between the people that I collaborate and work with. And we might not meet for sort of several weeks or several months, but then we come back together for another intention and, and work intensely for that period. And I have lots of time when I go away and have nothing to do with dance. And I, I'm just a mother and I 
you know, family and just focus on that for a while and then it, the time is right again to come together for another development. I think there's been a large agenda uh, to use dance to encourage um, social development and it, I, think it's, I think it's very positive the way that it's been seen as a tool that can bring about positive change in our society in Britain and a lot of the Arts Council's initiatives and things have been based around that and I think um, there's the community dance and a lot of people who are working as dance artists and working at grassroots level in, in Britain are extraordinary and there's some amazing work that is going on outside of theatre.